So we just talked about the binary logit model and we only have two alternatives. Now we're gonna briefly talk about the multinomial logit model where we have more than two alternatives, three or more. So we were able to simplify things down with the binary logit model when we only have two alternatives because they can, it, that model can essentially be expressed as just one, one equation, one comparison, but we can't do that with a multinomial logit of more than two choices, uh, alternatives, because ultimately we've got multiple comparisons going on and we can't represent that with just one equation, like we, uh, so we can't just like estimate it using a generalized linear model or something like that. We're gonna have to use something more complicated. So when we have a multinomial logit model, we want to express the choice probability of each alternative, just like we did, uh, like, like I showed in one of the first videos this week, the choice probability for any alternative is the exponential of its uh, representative utility divided by these sums of, of, of the exponential of representative utility summed over all alternatives. And so, you know, I just want to point out a few things here. Kind of the, the, the number of terms in the denominator is obviously going to scale with the, uh, with the number of alternatives that we have. So things get just kind of mathematically a little more to keep track of as, as we have more and more al al alternatives. Um, and then, uh, you know, we're gonna have, uh, so, so the denominator of each term is gonna be a little more complicated as we have more alternatives, but then also we're gonna have more choice probabilities to keep track of, because we're gonna wanna keep track of every choice probability. Uh, uh, so, so we've just got kind of, you can kind of see there's like a dimensionality here that as as we get more and more alternatives, things kind of get our problems get gets bigger and bigger. And so that's why uh, binary is really nice and things just get more and more complicated as we have more and more alternatives in our problem. Um, but once again, we're typically just going to express representative utility as being linear. So we can just say V equals beta times X. We can plug that in. Um, and then we can once again see that ultimately in the multinomial logit model, we're still at this place where a given choice probability, a given alternative's choice probability is just this function of some parameters that need to be estimated and the data about all of the different alternatives. It's this nonlinear function, so things are a little messy, uh, certainly more messy than we might be used to with OLS, and we don't actually observe choice probabilities, but ultimately we're gonna want to, uh, just to, to reiterate this, we're gonna want to estimate the betas, parameters, that make these choice probabilities kind of as consistent as possible with the actual observed choices. And so R has this package called mlogit that can estimate these kinds of multinomial logit models for us. In other words, it's going, we're going to give it the data and the kind of structure of the uh, representative utility, and it's going to find the values of those structural parameters, those betas, that make our choice probabilities consistent with the actual observed choices. It's a little tricky to use. We're going to work through uh, some examples in the, 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 the R examples at the end uh, that we talk about in class. Ultimately, it kind of requires two steps just to kind of get you ready for it. Uh, first, you're going to have to uh, kind of organize the data in a specific way so that R is able to determine uh, what are the decision makers, what are the alternatives, what data corresponds to decision makers versus alternatives. There's kind of a uh, we're kind of adding an extra dimension to the problem when we have multiple alternatives. And then you're also gonna to have to specify the formula for representative utility, which ends up being a little more complicated than we're, we're used to with like OLS. Um, so there's gonna be a little bit more going on there. Like I said, we'll talk about it when we're, we're actually working through things together in class, but I just wanted to lay the breadcrumbs there for, uh, for the fact that we're, things are gonna get a little more complicated when we're talking about multinomial logit models. So that is uh, all I've got on multinomial logit models. On the next video, we're going to start getting into some of the, the, the properties of the logit model. Uh, in particular, we'll start by talking about marginal effects and elasticities that come out of the model.